My listen. name is Ed Clement. I'm the executive director of Save Mount Diablo. Good afternoon to all of you. We hope you are well amidst the coronavirus pandemic. While there are certainly more challenging times ahead, it is also certain that nature can continue to nourish us if we connect with it responsibly, and this is very important in difficult times. We have a special gift of gratitude and inspiration for you, our supporters. Today's Zoom presentation by Stephen Joseph, the San Francisco Bay Area's premier natural landscape photographer. This afternoon, Stephen will lead a presentation and discussion about some of his newest photos, including some of his stunning tree portraits that look like the trees are dancing and swaying in the wind. Some of the work you will see today come from Stephen's new book, Mount Diablo, A Story of Place and Inspiration. This is the most beautiful and fascinating book ever created about the Mount Diablo natural areas. One of Save Mount Diablo's proud accomplishments was helping Stephen complete this amazing new book. In addition to Stephen's majestic photos, the book also contains essays by conservationists, and you can buy this uplifting book on Stephen's website. Stephen's presentation today, along with his new book, are really a beautiful invitation to get out and connect with the Mount Diablo natural areas and to cherish and protect these places. Getting out and connecting meaningfully and responsibly with nature during times of crisis, like the current times, is especially important. As we know, nature can help us heal physically, mentally, emotionally, and spiritually. Gratefully, because of your wonderful support, our Save Mount Diablo staff continue to work hard on conserving our critical Mount Diablo natural areas here, uh, albeit the staff are working remotely from home. Together, we will continue to do great things to protect the ultimate foundation for our long-term health and well-being, nature. Stephen, I just want to thank you again for all of the amazing work that you do to wake people up to the incredible Mount Diablo natural areas. And I want to thank you for providing this special gift of gratitude and inspiration to our supporters. We think the world of you. Please take it away, Stephen. Thank you, everyone, for joining us and enjoy Stephen's presentation. Thanks, Ted. Hi, everybody. Welcome again to Nice to see you all on my computer. I'm still not, I'm still getting used to these Zoom get togethers, but it's pretty neat that I can speak to everybody. Uh, and thank you, Ted and Save Mount Diablo again for being my first sponsor on my new book. And my book wouldn't have happened without Save Mount Diablo and especially Ted who said right off the bat, let's do that book. I was so glad when he said that. Uh, I'm just going to get right into some photographs. I've got a slideshow. I'm going to share my screen and we'll look at uh, pretty much mostly new work uh, since the book came out of different areas. And uh, I'm just going to talk as we go along. I've been photographing Mount Diablo for 35 years. Not that any of you don't know that. Um, and this is my newest work. So Mount Diablo from Akalani's Ridge. Everybody seeing that? Yes. Good, here we go. My favorite place to photograph the mountain from outside the mountain. Here's another nice shot. This is looking up John Ginocchio's property. So as you drive into the park from Northgate Road in Walnut Creek, it's funny because everybody, it's the, it's the first sharp curve in the road. And this is, you're pretty much looking at all of John Ginocchio's property. This is his, his ranch. And it has some of the best views of the mountain when you're uh, coming right into the park. Um, and it's a good thing that John Ginocchio is a cool rancher. So we're, we're safe on this property, hopefully. Uh, here's another great, this is one of my favorite views. This is up on uh, Hidden Pond. Has anybody hiked from Hidden Pond? Hidden Pond is at the bottom right side of the photograph. And it's just the greatest view. You see Diablo on the left, and then sweeping across is Morgan Territory. Curry Canyon Ranch, which is Save Mount Diablo's spectacular property, and then Black Hawk Ridge to the right. And it's just such a nice view, and it's right off of the road. I end up, a lot of people see me sitting there for hours at a time watching the light change. It's just a great view of the mountain and that valley beyond. The chemise blooming, 
again, looking out uh, towards Curry Canyon Ranch and a little bit of Morgan Territory. This was a great year for this, just beautiful white flowers and great contrast with the green. It was really fun to photograph. And then of course the Buckeyes, uh, this is maybe one of the, this, this was a good Buckeye year. It's funny, the Buckeyes really, uh, the flowers dried out very quickly this year, um, but they were nice and full. And this is on, um, this is in, on Diablo Foothills going towards the mountain, uh, East Bay Regional Park District uh, property. Fall, fall on Diablo, beautiful fall, great colors, great trees. Um, not part of my dancing <laughs> oak tree project, that's coming later. But you know, people, again, I mentioned this in the last presentation I did, but when people say that California, especially around Mount Diablo, we don't have colorful falls, it's just not true. You just have to go out and look for it. You don't see whole hillsides of gold and, and orange and red, but the, the, there are beautiful, beautiful oaks that turn these gorgeous yellow and golds. This is Round Valley actually, looking over uh, Hardy Canyon. And I've been hiking to the same spot in Round Valley for I don't know how many years, many, many years. And I go to the same place all the time. I park at the trailhead and I head right up, up the mountain or up the hills. And uh, I photograph from this spot quite a bit. You're looking across at Hardy Canyon and it's just beautiful oak trees and green hills and it's so nicely lit. And you see a few cows hidden in the bottom. And again, Round Valley, this is my spot in Round Valley. Um, and it's just a great double peak view from the south and all around Valley. And right on the other side of this ridge to the left is Morgan Territory. So Morgan Territory runs into Round Valley. If you haven't been out hiking in Round Valley, East Bay Regional Park District, uh, I highly recommend it. It's really a beautiful spot and just a great, there's even a backpacking camp there that groups can reserve. And I've camped there multiple times and it's just a beautiful spot. And again, the double peak view of the mountain from Round Valley. It's just a great, great spot. Oh, a little more Hardy Canyon. I just love this view across to the ridge. One of my oak trees with Hardy Canyon all around Valley and then back to the mountain. This is along Burma Road and very close to yew tree, my beautiful yew tree that people have been looking at those photographs for a long time. And that's Long Ridge in the back. And right in back of this tree, right on the other side of this ridge, is John Ginocchio's property that we saw in the earlier photograph. This year, I photographed a lot more fog. You know, I love the fog and the clouds. When you get above the clouds, you see the summit building to the left. And then going across, kind of right in the center of the photograph is North Peak. And then looking over to the right, you see some of Morgan Territory and again, Curry Canyon Ranch. Curry Canyon Ranch, SMD's property, shows up in a lot of photographs because it's so centrally located when you're on the mountain looking to the south or the east. It shows up all the time. What a significant property that's turned out to be. But I just love the way you can get above the fog and the clouds and it's like you're in a whole nother world. Here's Devil's Pulpit with the, the clouds in the back. And again, looking out towards uh, Curry Canyon Ranch. Devil's Pulpit's a great rock feature on the mountain, just below the summit. It's actually on the Mary Bowerman Trail. So if you go up to the top of the mountain, take the Mary Bowerman Trail just below the summit. It's a wonderful walk and you see all 360 degrees as you, as you walk around the mountain. And this is kind of near you know, one side of it. Uh, this Devil's Pulpit. And below it is called Devil's Elbow. And to the right is Ryan Canyon. Here's a photograph of Ryan Canyon um, with Curry Canyon Ranch right in the middle ground and then Morgan Territory off to the left. And this is a great place to view the Sierras from. Uh, on clear days, the Sierras are all just to the left on the horizon. Another shot towards uh, Curry Canyon Ranch, Black Hawk Ridge. And again, more above the clouds. I love looking into the clouds. It, and you know, you go up there, sometimes you don't see the ground at all or the ground below the clouds. 
and you really feel like you're in a whole nother world. It's great that the way the shadows play and the light and the clouds keep moving through. Some of my coldest days on the mountain have been when it's fog below and windy on top and cold. Look at that fog, it's so great. This is, this is above Skunk Hollow, what I call Skunk Hollow, or just above Pine Pond actually. And Pine Pond is actually on the map. Uh, and you're looking across at Wall Ridge, and it's just great to watch the, um, the fog when it comes. You can get right above it, and it, it sweeps in and sweeps out and makes for all these beautiful patterns. Another one of those. Yeah, check this out. It's so nice to see the fog. And, you know, as it, as it curls around and in and out of the trees and the hills, it just makes all these beautiful shapes. Another nice shot, this is uh, um, Diablo Foothills, and this is not far from my gallery. And in the last couple of months, this is where I've been hiking. <laughs> I've been spending a tremendous amount of time from Diablo Foothills, right, which is right across from Castle Rock, all the way over to China Wall, and then the mountain. Uh, this is where I, you'll see a bunch of photographs from that area. And if you look on the horizon, all the way on the horizon, right in the center of the photograph, that's a uh, round top. That's where the tunnel goes through. Caldecott Tunnel is right in the center of the photograph. And looking out from here, you'd never know we're looking at, what, a million people or something? Not a million, because we're not seeing the whole county, but a lot of people. And yet these hills are left open. Here's the edge of Long Ridge looking out to the west. You're looking down at Walnut Creek. Another photograph from my and Bob Marks's spot. I mentioned that on that story on the first project, uh, the first webinar, uh, webinar. This is where Bob Marks and I met, was overlooking this spot. And uh, we had a very, that was <laughs> 30 years ago. Can't believe it. Oh, this is a shot from Lime Ridge. It's funny, you know, Lime Ridge, I don't know how many people hike Lime Ridge, but it's beautiful. This was for a project I just finished for the city of Walnut Creek. I photographed all of their six open spaces. And this is one of the photographs from that project. And I spent a bunch of time hiking around Lime Ridge looking for the best photograph, but it's a great view of Diablo. And of course, just to the left is one of the quarries that I cut out of the photograph. Just above, uh, just above my gallery, actually, you see a little bit of China Wall on the left. Another one of my oak trees. And continuing with my trail photo photographing, I never used to, to photograph trails ever. And all this time, I mentioned this in the last one, I'm hiking along going, these trails are beautiful. Why am I leaving the trails out of my photographs? And so this is another one of my trails. I love this one. Check this one out. This is the wall point. Uh, Wall Ridge Trail, I think it's called. And it's just a beautiful trail, again, leading from uh, close to China Wall. And it meanders. Now, this is kind of unbelievable, but the other day I came across another yew tree just to the left of, of this trail that you see off. This is the Wall Ridge Trail and beautiful views of Mount Diablo. And I, I just can't believe I found another yew tree. I'm going to have to start photographing that tree. Some more stuff along Burma Road and looking over at Long Ridge. Great end of the daylight. I love backlit trees. Look at this cloud. I was up there for about four hours this day just hanging out, a few clouds floating around, and then all of a sudden this giant cloud floats into my view. I love contrasting the clouds against the, the rolling hills and capturing the light. Looking out over, uh, <laughs> actually I call this Green Black Hill. It's, it's really the Wall Ridge Trail, is is at the very top of this. Had to include a snow photograph. That was from this year. 
I'm not a big snow person. Uh, everybody always asks me, where are your snow pictures of Diablo? Well, here's a snow picture. <laughs> I don't take that many snow photographs of Diablo. Another nice shot. I'm calling this ridge in the foreground Castle Ridge, actually. There's no name for it, but just to the left is uh, Castle Rock. So I've now named this foreground ridge uh, Castle Ridge with Diablo in the background. This is my new spot that I've, I've um, been sharing with Ted. There's a rock up on the top of this hill. This hill is actually 1,050 feet tall. And a lot of my photographs of Diablo is taken from this ridge. And I found out a little while ago that Ted has been hiking up here in the early morning and sitting there. So one of these days, I'm going to meet Ted up on our hill. Castle Rock. I love Castle Rock. Back a little further. This is from mine and Bob Marx's spot um, where we met. What a feature Castle Rock is. You know, it's so funny. You, everybody sees it from the highway when you drive through the Caldecott Tunnel and you come along and see Castle Rock. You see the distance, but up close is just so majestic. And this is, of course, where the Peregrine Falcon Project is going on. Look at this light. This was just, just before it turned gold, actually. It turned gold very quick this year. And this was one of those days that just had atmosphere. I like to try to photograph atmosphere. And this really had it. It's just a quality of light that I look for. And I don't always find this. You know, it happens usually near the end of the day when there are clouds. This was a very cloudy day, and then it cleared. And at the very end of the day, um, the sun came out and lit up Castle Rock. Nice spot. This is again in the Diablo foothills. The other day I hiked four miles and I never lost sight of China Wall. China Wall is just off to the right, but I was able to make this huge loop and I zigzagged around and did four miles and the whole time I never lost sight of, of China Wall. It's such an interesting feature. And of course, China Wall is where St. Mount Diablo has moonlight on the mountain. Fabulous event if you've never been to it. It's a nice sunset light. You know, I don't get a lot of sun. I don't drive at night. So it's tough for me to get sunsets. <laughs> I have to be in a place where I can photograph the sunset and then get home before it gets completely dark. I probably need a driver. This is my favorite trail. This is Burma Road. Don't you just want to walk down this trail? This is the really steep part of Burma Road where Scott Williams trains for all of his through hikes. And I just, uh, I love this photograph with the trail winding down the mountain. Another Castle Rock with Mount Zion, kind of in the middle. And again, you're looking at John Ginocchio's property. His property goes off to the right and back with Castle Rock. This is from my, my uh, I'll have to call it my, mine and Ted's spot now, uh, looking over at the mountain with China Wall. I mean, can you imagine right at the bottom of this photograph by China Wall is where St. Mount Diablo does moonlight on the mountain. Kind of incredible. Another photograph from the China Wall area. Is China Wall again. This was just taken a couple days ago. My tree portraits. Castle Rock. <laughs> this is a brand new spot. I've never stood here before. 35 years of photographing Mount Diablo, and I'm still surprised, and I've hiked everywhere. I'm still surprised that I still find new views. I've wandered into this view. This is just to the, the west of Castle Rock, and it's from the ridge right across the way. And it's like, oh my God, a new view I've never seen before. <laughs> I'm always surprised when I find these. I guess I won't stop photographing Mount Diablo as long as I can keep finding new views. And you know, you gotta remember, the light's always different. The weather's different. The clouds are different. There's no two days that look alike. Maybe a sunny day like this couple of last days, 
things would look, you know, kind of similar, but with changing weather, that's why I love photographing all these clouds and light. With the light changing so rapidly because of the clouds, the shadows on the ground and the quality of light, it changes every day. And another, that's China Wall in the foreground. You can see I've been, I've been hanging out in that China Wall area in the last couple of months, so it shows up a lot in my photographs. Another, there's China Wall off to the left. See the Buckeyes, this was taken a week ago and the Buckeyes are, the flowers are gone already. I mean, you can see there's a Buckeye right in the middle of the, of the frame and the, the, the flowers have all dried out already. Another shot from, that's Castle Ridge in the middle. This is, this is where I hike four miles in one day, never losing sight of, of of China Wall or the mountain. There's so many interesting places. My road to, road to the clouds. God, I never get tired of this. I hope you guys don't get tired of looking at photographs of Mount Diablo because I sure never get tired of photographing it. One day I had lunch, this was many years ago, I had lunch with Seth Adams and my parents. This was quite a few years ago. We were having lunch at a Thai restaurant and Seth says to my father, he goes, so what do you think about your son dedicating his whole life to photographing one place? <laughs> I remember him saying that. I don't really remember what my father said, but he did say to me a year ago, he said, maybe you should diversify a little bit. I said, nah. Another photograph of looking out over uh, Wall Ridge. You know, this year was an incredible poppy year. I don't know if everybody got out and saw the poppies, but it's funny, the, uh, the grass grew so slow. You know, it's a, the, in order to have a really good poppy year, the poppies have to grow faster than the grass. And so you see them, otherwise the grass covers up the poppies. Um, but this year the grass was low, the poppies were high and it was a pretty good poppy year. This actually is right in front of my wonderful yew tree. I love getting beams of light late in the day where you see these light rays coming down from the sky. I love photographing that. You know, you see this a lot when you're in redwoods and you're on the coast, but it's less, it's, you don't find it as much on Mount Diablo course, how can I not throw in a yew tree sunset? Uh, again, long ridge off to the right, yew tree on the left. I never get tired of yew tree either. This was one day where the clouds were just really low in the morning and they were creeping around the hills. And you'll see a little series of photographs that are taken under similar um, you know, lighting conditions. And it just, it's just so beautiful. I love mixing when the clouds are low enough so you're shooting through the clouds at the rolling hills and the trees. Great, nice sky, beautiful light, early morning. You can tell it's early morning. The sun is off to the left, right? And that's to the east. <clears throat> but check this out. Look at that. This was the most magical day. I was up, you're looking at Black Hawk Ridge, and then off to the right would be San Ramon, and then straight ahead would be uh, off, uh, you're looking at probably Pleasanton Ridge, and Snow Wilderness is all the way off on the horizon. Black Hawk Ridge with Curry Canyon Ranch off to the left. And the play of light that day was just beautiful. Look at this. Look at the different layers of clouds. You got the upper clouds, then you got that nice dark cloud in the middle, and then the, the sun was just shining on that. The layer of clouds that was hanging right over Curry Canyon Ranch, actually. I, uh, this was very unusual. I don't think this, this couple of photographs, I really don't have anything else quite like it. These were very unique. I mean, look at this. Beautiful light with uh, clouds and God, what a, what a great day that was. This is one of those days where I just go crazy. I'm out photographing and 
every time I turn around, I, oh my God, look at that. I got to capture that. And then I walk a little bit. Oh my God, look at that. And I, I, these are, uh, a day like today is a, a very productive photographic day. And again, getting those rays of light coming down um, through the sky is nice. Oh, here's another shot of John Ginocchio's property, El Ciro Ranch. Um, John's taking me around all over his property. Sometimes I go out with him either when he's working or he'll drive me around and we'll go on his property. And he's, it's, it's a really nice part of the, of the, uh, of the mountain. Of course, got to throw in a rainbow. Most of my rainbows were in my, my new book. Um, but here's one of my rainbow shots over Castle. I mean, look at the light. Look at the light on Castle Rock. This is one of those incredible times where it's cloudy for hours and hours and hours. Then it rains, and then the sun just happens to come out at the end of the day, and you get the rainbow, the rainbow in Castle Rock. It's just beautiful light with a nice kind of misty mountain in the background. All right, this is the beginning. This is a section of my new project, Dancing Trees. I hope to work with the choreographer in Boston. I've been talking to her. Um, and we're talking about maybe doing a project together where to me, whenever I look at these photographs of the oaks, they, to me, they look like they're dancing. They're swaying in the wind. Great time to do it is when the leaves aren't on uh, the trees and you can really see the tr structure of the trees. And I've always photographed trees. I mean, I'm a, I, I love trees. Trees are my favorite, favorite things to photograph with clouds and light. Um, but last year or so, I'm looking at it going, God, they look like they're dancing. They're, even though they're static images of trees, they, they look like they're moving. And I like to create that motion. Uh, so I've been doing a whole series of photographs, getting ready for that. Um, and uh, we'll see if, if uh, we get this together. But I kind of envision a space. I'd love to do this outdoors. It would be incredible to do it like at the Shakespeare Festival in Arinda, you know, to, on that stage to have images all the way around and then have the dancers on the stage. It would look very cool. So these are all my, my dancing trees. Picture, dancers, original music, nighttime images on a screen. I love it. And again, you know, this is when the leaves first come out and you, you got about a week to 10 days window where the leaves are small, you still see the structure of the tree, which I love that. And then you get to see these brilliant uh, colors coming through the, you know, the sunlight shining through the, um, through the leaves. Boy, the trees on Diablo have so much character. I, I, I've never gotten tired of photographing these trees. And you know, I go back to these trees over and over and over. The light is only right at a certain time of year, a certain time of day in order to capture a certain look. And so I go back to these trees over and over and over. Um, I find, I like to find singular trees that stand out so I can get back and actually, you know, to me, they're tree portraits. So I'm not doing forests, I'm doing individual trees and trying to get their character. Um, and these are all, you know, they're, they're swaying in the wind. I like this one. Picture this seven feet tall on your wall. Anybody need a big oak in their living room? I mean, you know, and I, I'm not distorting these trees. I mean, these are, you know, this is what they look like. They're bending and moving. And, you know, when you capture, now this is a very tall photograph. This is shot, if any photographers are watching, this is shot with a fisheye. So it's a 180 degree vertical photograph, which is, is really, really tall. And that's why you're seeing so much of the tree and the bending. I mean, basically this is a photograph from my feet all the way up to the sky.
And again, you see most of these are backlit. I'm a big fan of backlit. It's extremely difficult to photograph. Uh, with the new digital cameras, I use a Nikon D850, which is probably Nikon's best digital camera right now. And it has the most dynamic range, which is very important to photographers. I'm more concerned with dynamic range than resolution. These are very high resolution photographs because I make very large murals and, you know, and uh, these go on to lobbies and homes and they're, they have to be very big. So resolution is important, but nothing is more important than dynamic range. And dynamic range is the ability to photograph bright highlights and deep shadows in one photograph. And that's what this camera is just exceptional. So it's been for my Diablo work, it's been wonderful, especially for these uh, tree photographs. See here, you, the leaves are just coming out. I mean, these are probably like three, four days old uh, as far as the leaves coming out in these trees. See, I just, I see dancers moving in and out of these trees. It would be very cool to actually do a dance in the trees, but since it would be tough to get an audience where I photograph, I think this is what I'm going to have to do is have dancers moving in and out of my trees. Boy, I should do this in 3D photography. That would be pretty cool. And of course, you've got to have you tree in there. Look at the shadows. I also like the shadows. When stuff is backlit, you get these very strong shadows and they become as strong, the shadows become as strong uh, part of the photograph as the tree itself. Um, just like negative space is very important in photographs. Lots of you tree. These are uh, a new project that I'm just finishing up now. I thought I'd show a few photographs. Uh, the city of San Ramon had hired me to do all their open space. So I've been photographing their open space since winter. And this is actually, this is the, the laborers union property. This is gonna be a new East Bay Regional Park District. Uh, they're gonna be purchasing this property. But what's interesting about photographing in San Ramon is I don't usually include houses in my photographs. <laughs> If you're used to seeing my photography, especially my new book, you don't really see houses in. Well, since there's a lot of homes in San Ramon and a lot of their spaces are ridge tops, um, I've started photographing homes in valleys. And uh, that's part of the open space project for San Ramon. But it's been interesting seeing Mount Diablo from different perspectives, especially from the south. I don't always get to photograph that. This is Hidden Valley on the Hidden Valley, Upper Hidden Valley Trail. San Ramon's got some great hiking, really beautiful ridge tops and trails and all the way from uh, Bishop Ranch Regional Park in the west, all the way over to Tassajara, um, which is right on the left side of this photograph. Of course, this is one of the trails. This is the Bishop Ranch um, Lake, and there's a really nice trail that goes all the way around the lake. So that's included in the in the San Ramon, uh, uh, my friend Alex uh, Moran liked this photograph, I think, <laughs> showing off his place quite well. Alamo Creek, um, this winds all the way through Alamo, very cool, uh, I mean, uh, San Ramon. This is along one of their trails. Alamo Creek again. East branch of the Alamo Creek. And just different views of Mount Diablo. Here's Mount Diablo from one of the ridgetop uh, parks in San Ramon. Dramatic lighting that day. This is all from the, the this will be a new park, East Bay Regional New Park. This is just below this is a little bit below Bishop Ranch Regional Park. Interesting views across the valley towards Mount Diablo. All right, this is a little different. I just shot these just not too long ago. This is uh, the Concord Mount Diablo Trail Riding Association property. And I'm pretty sure Young Canyon is just below here. That's a same Mount Diablo property. I think it, I'm pretty sure it connects up here. 
but this is a gorgeous property. It's 150 acres. Um, Save Mount Diablo has just signed papers to uh, preserve this property, and they have less than two years to raise a million dollars in order to buy this property. So it's really crucial that everybody comes together on this because it is a beautiful 150 acres. And it's just, it's got the best views of Eagle Peak. That's Eagle Peak on the distance, uh, in, I mean, in the mid, middle ground there. Um, and it's just gorgeous views of Eagle Peak. It's a really nice property. There's this great trail that goes through the middle of it and this area, but it's a, it's a great area. So with some, uh, with everybody's support, St. Mount Diablo will reach their goal in that period of time. I mean, it's got a gorgeous grove of trees. I did a bunch of tree photographs on the Trail Riding Association's property. And here's one of the trails. You see the trail going right through the middle. Beautiful property. <laughs> this is the view from the very edge. This is the view from the top of the, of the um, Concord Diablo Trail Riding Association. I mean, look at this view. On the left, you have Crager Peak. That's, you can see a couple of small towers and that is uh, Crager Peak on the left. That's uh, East Bay Regional Park District Land Bank. And then moving across is Chaparral Springs, which was you know, probably one of the first properties that Save Mount Diablo purchased that I photographed extensively. It gave me my first great views back towards the mountain. And then Clayton Ranch. So everything you see <laughs> kind of along the horizon all across is East Bay Regional Park Land Bank. Someday that'll be parkland. Okay, I had to throw this in. My, rant, my, my gallery is at Summit Ranch, Bob and Joan Marks's uh, ranch. And it's a horse ranch. There's over 100 horses boarded there. People have been asking me, my gallery opened four years ago, and I keep getting asked, why don't you shoot horses? Well, I don't, you know, I say, well, horses move, trees don't, you know, it's easy. I like, it's, it's not my thing. Well, that's going to change. Here's my first <laughs> horse rider portrait. What I'm interested in capturing is the relationship between the horse and the rider. So I'm going to be working on that over the next year. Okay, I know this isn't Diablo, but here's a quick little view with all this heat. This is another brand new project. I'm photographing Sonoma Coast and Mendocino Coast. And I'm doing a whole project of waves and rocks and ocean. And you know, usually I'm doing Mount Diablo. That's been my main work for all these years. But I'm now looking at photographing the ocean a little more. And I love the movement. And it's, it's tricky getting waves and stopping the motion in the clouds and finding the right spots, but I'm, I'm really enjoying photographing the ocean. It's a whole different feeling and uh, it's something I'm, I, I'll be working out over the next couple of years. Pretty different than Diablo, wouldn't you think? I mean, look at this movement. How could you not want to photograph that? And it's interesting, you know, trying to decide when you're photographing water, you know, how long of an exposure you're going to use. You're going to slow the water down and create a sense of motion. And you're going to freeze some stuff. And I love contrasting the sharp rocks against the movement of the water and creating atmosphere that way. And then back to Mount Diablo. And that is, let's see, if that's the end of my slideshow. Yes, um, so far one question was, someone was asking what type of camera they use. Well, I use the, um, um, uh, the Nikon D850. It's a 46 megapixel camera, and uh, which is very high resolution. And when I stitch my images together, when if I put eight or 10 images, a lot of those panoramic photographs sometimes are 12, 14 images. Uh, the file sides get up, get up to about a gigabyte. They're really huge. So when you take a 46 or seven megapixel camera and stitch 
uh, 10 photographs together, you come out with hundreds of megabytes. And that's how I make these huge photographs is through very high resolution photographs. Okay, great. Anyone else have questions for Stephen? Um, but didn't you once do a set of urban, Im urban images from San Francisco? No, I did some, I did a, I did some photographs from the top of the Fairmont um, and they're pretty cool. I did some whole panoramic photographs at sunset. They actually left me alone up on the roof for about four hours and I climbed up on one of the edges and set up my tripod and did a really nice uh, sunset panorama of all of downtown San Francisco. Wow. My only, my most urban work has really been my Broadway work in New York where I Broadway reveal and I photographed all of the set designers, costume designers, lighting designers of Broadway. And that's all available. You can see all that on my website. Everything's on my website. Um, let's see here. Do you ever shoot with film? <laughs> well, not anymore. I used to, you know, my specialty was 100 year old cameras and film. And I was using cameras that took seven by 17 inch photographs. Uh, that was the size of the negative, seven by 17 inches. One of my circuit cameras took 60 inch long negatives and then I would contact print them. And that, those were my film days. But you know, it's been, oh boy, it's been 20 some years since I went digital. And uh, no, I, it's hard to go back. There's, there's film is interesting uh, and certainly, but I, I can't do what I do now with film. Uh, I can't make these huge murals and prints on film. It just doesn't, the resolution isn't there. And the controls that I have now and recording this, what I talked about, the dynamic range, um, there's no greater dynamic range than with these digital cameras. And that's what I'm all about. So no, I don't shoot with film anymore. Um, what's the best time of the year to, um, and time of the day to take backlit photos of trees without leaves? Well, early spring, you have to get it just before the leaves come out. So this particular year, you know, when the, it, it, I, you could do green or gold. I happen to like the backlit with the green. So I probably started photographing the trees. You know, it started turning green, some in January, February, you know, usually before March. By March, this year it was late, but by first week in March, usually the new leaves are coming out um, and then it, it can be all times of day. The nice thing about shooting in the winter time, the sun is very low to the horizon. Mm. When the sun's low to the horizon, you can back light, you can back, the trees can be back lit. When the sun is straight overhead, it's hard. Um, so really uh, early winter up through March and uh, any time of day because the sun is low. Ted has a good question for you. Um, what has been your most stunning or startling experience out taking photos in the Mount Diablo natural areas? <laughs> every day is stunning. You know, every day I feel so excited to be out photographing. I can't tell, I mean, you know, whether or not people believe me, I start out on a hike every morning. I decide, okay, where am I going to go today? I look mm -hmm. at the weather. I watch the weather. I, is there clouds? Should I be in Morgan territory? Should I, is it morning? Should I be on that side of the mountain? Should I be on this side of the mountain? Where am I going to go? I make those decisions when I drive. I've mm -hmm. often had people say to me, you know, you really should let somebody know where you're going beforehand. Uh, I can't do that because I never know. I really, when I leave the house and drive away and I, I don't have a view from the mountain from my home, as soon as I see the mountain and I've looked at the weather, I decide where to go. Um, so I never really know where I'm going to go. But I, you know, I photograph all over the mountain and every day I'm out and it's exciting. And it's, I, I just, a few days ago, I found new views of Diablo. You know how much I've walked around China Wall and yet here was a new view. So it, it's every day. Of course, the, the, the couple of mountain lion sightings were exciting. The day I spent the hour with the bobcat was exciting. That's different for me because I don't usually photograph wildlife. I leave all the birds and stuff to Scott Hine. He's the fabulous photographer for all that as well as a great landscape photographer. Um, but I, I, uh, I don't know that, you know, if it's an incredible day with incredible clouds and light, of course, I'm, I go crazy. Uh, but you know, it's every day that I'm alive and I'm walking 
and I'm in a beautiful open space thanks to all of our wonderful organizations like Save Mount Diablo and East Bay Regional Park District and all these things. I am just glad I'm out there and I'm excited to be there and I always enjoy it. It's just every day. So Ted, every day is a wonderful experience. I'm so glad to live here with so many people that care about our environment. I mean, think of that. You know, how many, look at all the people that care. That, and you know, Save Mount Diablo's success is, is just shows what can be done with a, with a handful of volunteers and then great leaders like Ted and all of you guys and your wonderful partner. I, I love working with you guys. And I, that's what I'm leaving behind. You know, I'm leaving behind uh, photographs of what could be in a population of millions of people. This is what could be. We can have this much open space and uh, it just takes a, a lot of fabulous people and effort. And look what we've all done. Yeah. Um, here's one that I actually know the answer to. It was the la uh, Kendra was asking the last photo with the rainbow on Castle Rock. Yeah. Since it had just rained, did you sit out in the rain to get that shot? I happen to know that you sit out in the rain for hours and hours, don't I you? I do. I do. Yes. I, yes. I, I'm very well prepared for rain. Uh, you know, I carry a a very compact light rain jacket. I carry an umbrella. Um, and there are times when I just sit for an hour and I, two hours, three hours, and I'm in the rain and I take a photograph, then it rains again. That's the only way to get rainbow photographs. You've got to get wet. You got to be out in the rain because these are fleeting. That, that, that photograph looks like, I don't know, it looks like it could be there forever. You know, and yet it was one minute. <laughs> the light came out the rainbow formed and then it's gone. They're so magical, I think, because they're so fleeting. And, and uh, you know, uh, you have to be out all the time in order to get good rainbow photographs. You gotta get wet, you gotta get out and, and be there to see it and be ready. You know, you can't be like looking the wrong way. You can't be, I mean, some of the times I'm photographing like crazy and I turn around, it's like, oh my God, look what's in back of me, you know, so. It's uh, um, one of the special things. One of the participants is asking which, uh, which days and hours your gallery's open. Well, right now my gallery's closed because of our present crisis. I'm not open right now. But on my website, uh, I, I'm usually open Sundays from 12 to 3. I don't open the gallery more hours. I have a lot of people saying, why are you only open for those times? And I'm like, well, Sunday's a good day to go to an art gallery. And if you want to come see my photographs, you're going to have to come on Sunday between 12 and 3. And if you look at my website, please check my website before coming. Um, there's a right at the very top of the website each week that it's open. I list, I'm open, you know, I might list the next date or a couple of dates. Um, so that's how you plan. Just look at the website. It's stephenjosephphoto.gallery. And that'll tell my my days that I'm up there, and it'll say the hours. It'll say 12 to 3, 12 to 4, and I might expand those hours uh, as time goes on, and I hope to be able to open the gallery soon, but right now I'm, I'm closed like a lot of other places. Here's another good one. Have you explored the Diablo Range? Well, I did. I went on the wonderful trip with Ted and Seth and and everybody, and I took a lot of the photographs for the Bay Nature article, and uh, that was my only experience going on the Diablo Range, and it was magnificent. You know, we went up on the, oh, it was, it was amazing. It, it gave me a perspective. It shows how important the whole range is to our Mount Diablo. You know, you don't realize that Diablo, you know, we look at Diablo, it stands alone, right? Uh, well, it doesn't stand alone. And as far as the wildlife goes and every, all the biodiversity and stuff, we need the whole range preserved. That's my opinion. And I know it's Seth's opinion and a lot of other people's opinion, but it gave, that's what was so wonderful about it was seeing what an integral part Mount Diablo is in the Diablo range and how important the whole range is. You can't, you can't, you're not going to have an isolated spot and have mountain lions and bobcats and all this stuff going on if all you have is one area. We need to connect these areas up and the Diablo range seems perfect for me. And it is just spectacular. It's, it's, uh, it, that was an amazing trip. I'm not seeing anything else jumping up. Um, 
Ted, do you have any other thoughts or questions? I, I, I see one more question here, Stephen. Maybe you've got a quick response to it. What editing app do you use to edit these pictures? I use Camera Raw in Photoshop. So I only use Photoshop. Um, and then uh, Camera Raw is, I don't use Lightroom. A lot of people use Lightroom. And most of my fellow photographer friends, they go, what, you don't use Lightroom? What's wrong with you? Well, I don't use Lightroom. I use what's called Camera Raw. And okay. Camera Raw is a component of, of Photoshop. And for me, it works just perfectly. I know it backwards and forwards, in and out. And that's how I create my stunning photographs is in Camera Raw in Photoshop. That's really the only program I use. Thank you, Stephen. You know, I just want to, uh, Thank you uh, for that wonderful presentation. Stephen, your images really show you as the artist that you are. And Thanks, Ted. Yeah, really just so inspiring. And, and Stephen, as you know, that's really the purpose of our free Zoom series is just to help remind all of our wonderful uh, supporters during these challenging times uh, that there are these really inspiring things right around us and, and we can go to those places if we're down and we can be uplifted and we can be nourished uh, and together with those incredible natural places we're going to get through this uh, and they can then continue to nourish us well into the future but your pictures really capture that and remind us how fortunate uh, we are and um, there's such a great call to action too, to keep taking care of these cherished places so they will nourish and sustain us for years to come. So we just can't thank you enough for your great work, Stephen, and sharing this inspiration with all of our wonderful supporters who directly help us protect these places. So uh, cheers to you, Stephen, and cheers to everyone on this Zoom call uh, for supporting Save Mount Diablo. I hope you found today as uplifting as I did. I also want to acknowledge a couple of my teammates on this call, Joanne and Karen, for all the work they did helping Stephen bring this presentation to you. Um, yeah, it's always uplifting being with all of you. Thank you. Thanks, Thank Ted. you. Thank you. Bye.